Welcome back guys for another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make an external bell siphon or an external overflow on the grow bed that you can see there behind me. So this is the grow bed that I'll be putting it on, which is a fiberglass grow bed. So the first step you actually wanna do is drill a hole and install a bulkhead. I will post the link to a video that I did drill a hole in this below if you wanted to check that out. Otherwise, it's fairly simple, just drilling a hole and sticking a bulkhead in there. And then from there, we'll go on to the next stuff. So what you'll be using is fairly simple, whether it's the same size as mine or smaller, but what I'm gonna be using on my, for my external bell siphon or external overflow is a three inch pipe. So this one is a little different. You can get it with all at the same, but I just had this one lying around, which goes from three inch to two inch right here. So this one is a two inch. If you want, you can use one that is all the same. You'll just have to use bushings. So the general concept when it comes to one of these bell siphons is you'll have a T like so attached to your grow bed in a situation like this. Let me do that real quick. So you'll have a T attached to the grow bed like so. As I said, my particular T is a little different than you'll typically find since it has a two inch here and three inch over here. So you can just use a normal PVC T, depending on what size you're using. For my particular one, I'm using a three inch T that is reduced to a two inch T over here. If you didn't have one in particular like this, what you'd use is just bushings to go from the one size to the next. So typically I would have this guy here and then a two inch pipe like so. But otherwise that is the first kind of step that you will have to do is have that there. So how these will generally work is that you'll have a pipe going down through the center, which is a smaller diameter. I'm gonna be trying to use a two inch pipe on here because I want a better flow, but I'll have a two inch pipe going down through here, and then that will be going into the sump tech down there. So how you connect that two inch pipe differs on like what you're using. For mine, since it is a three inch pipe using a two inch, what I can actually use, which makes it very simple, is one of these rubber coupler kind of things, which goes from three inch to two inch and then this will basically be attached here at the bottom like so and then I'll have a pipe going directly through here and up through here that will also regulate the height of the water in the grow bed for example if I wasn't doing an external bell siphon here I would just have a pipe coming up with no cap on top and that will just regulate the water level in there as an overflow if you were doing it on a smaller pipe and didn't have one of these, the other way to do it would be to go with a bushing like one of these, which would, I wouldn't use this, it would be installed in the bottom, like this would be flipped over, like so. The only thing with bushings though is they do have typically a rim on the inside, which I'll show you. This one is shaved down as you can see, that way you can fit the PVC pipe directly through it, otherwise it will stop like one of these. So when you do buy a, a bushing originally, as I mentioned, they come with this lip in there that you can see. And that prevents you from slipping a PVC pipe all the way through, because the, what you need to do on one of these is have a pipe coming directly through here and it won't work with this lip here. So what you would do is basically shave it off or sand it off. If you have a hole saw that is exact diameter as this, then that'll be easy, you just drill it out Otherwise, you can use a knife, a file, or something to shave out that part. And that basically does the same thing as using one of these rubber couplers, because the pipe will be sticking through like so. So we have, this is a smaller pipe, but just for this demonstration, until I put one in there, it will be like this. You'll have this guy attached here, or in most cases, you'll have one of these over there, and then you'll have your pipe going through like so. Now you can see that I have the bottom part connected. So from here, it is going directly into this sump tank down here via this piping. So this is the main aspect to this particular setup since I have a pipe going through directly here out over there. So at the bottom, I actually put a coupler which will allow me to change whatever pipe I have in here. So for does that pipe you stick in here, which would be for example, this one right here which I'll hammer down but this is determining the height in the grow bed so with this right here you can do two options you can either have it at constant height which is what I'll be doing in this particular grow bed since it's gonna be 
having rafts in there or for example if it was a media grow bed like so you can make it as a bell siphon which I will show you how to do as well and there you have it that's pretty much how it looks as I mentioned though for a bell siphon effect what you would do is put a cap on top here which would basically allow that siphoning effect to happen but for my purpose I don't need this so I just take it off and then the water will just overflow in there and that pipe right there is determining the height in the grow bed so whatever pipe you put in there make sure it is not higher than your particular grow bed otherwise it will overflow also ideally in this three inch piping it would probably be better if I had an inch and a half pipe just because you can see there isn't much gap here. Well, actually there's not much gap on that side just because this grow bed is built at an angle. So it kind of tilts the whole thing. For example, if it was completely level, then it would go up more centered, somehow like that. So just to be clear, here is a normal just overflow. You have put a cap on there and now you have that bell siphon. No bell siphon, bell siphon because basically this allows that siphoning effect to happen. If it was just like this, then nothing will happen. Just water will drain through there. All right, so I have this external overflow set up now, which is working well. The only thing is though, that it does have some little leak in this pipe since this is not glued at all, but that is fine. I'll fix that later on. So basically that is how it is. I have the water entering through that side over there, coming over here and then into this pipe it comes through this bulkhead inside of the side of this fiberglass tank which is down there so that how the water enters i will most likely put a a 90 going down so it's sucking directly from the bottom that way it gets the gunk from the bottom of the water but that'll be later on also i put some kind of screen on there because there might be some crayfish or something in here but that's where the water comes in to here and then it goes and overflows down through this pipe right there. You can kind of notice it. The flow is quite slow though. And then from there, it goes through here, down there, and then back into my sump, which is down here. So that's basically how that guy looks. For also, this is pretty much exactly how an external siphon would be set up. The only difference is you would be putting a cap on top like so, and when you put the cap on there, it allows that siphoning effect to start. However, it won't work on my one for two reasons. One is the flow into this grow bed is too slow, so there's not enough water to create a siphoning effect there. And also, if I had this pipe smaller, it will increase the likelihood of the siphon kicking in because I have a two inch pipe. I would need a good amount of flow in there for a siphon to even take place. So those are basically the two reasons why this wouldn't be able to be set up as a bell siphon right now but that is the general idea for a, an external bell siphon. You have the same kind of concept. You have the stand pipe going in there, out through the bottom like that, and then you would have that cap on there. But again, as I mentioned, I do need to increase the flow rate for this, plus I would have to probably decrease the, di the diameter of the pipe inside, which I might do anyway, to an inch and a half or something. But that is how it is there. Got some stuff planted there. Got some straps holding the integrity of this fiberglass grow bed. So that's pretty much that. So to recap basically on the general design of these external overflows or external bell siphons, you'll have this design kind of right here. You'll have a T, which is a center part like so. Oh, too close. So this part is the T, which would be right here. Pretty much. It's kind of hard to draw from looking through the camera, but you will have a T like so. So that's this T that you look here. Then the important aspects which makes these work is you will have a bushing. Like so, this is a three inch bushing that I was gonna use for the one I have over there, but decided to just go with the rubber coupler, which you saw earlier in the video. Basically, this guy will be plugged into the bottom of here, like this guy here. This will be the bushing part here and it goes into the bottom of the T. And then on these bushings, they do have a rim on there, so you do have to sand it down. But why you're using these is because this allows you to stick a pipe directly through it after you do carve that out, so that you can have that stand pipe coming all the way up like so. Just like as you've seen in my other one, 
I have the pipe coming all the way to the top and going out down to here. Is to do that sip siphoning effect or to do the overflow, you do need a pipe coming up and down. That's that part of it. So you have that pipe going up. And then if you want to increase the bell siphon effect, you would want to put another bushing on top because that allows just for it to funnel downwards, which creates the siphoning better. And then at the top, you'll have a cap. So that's the general design of how that would be set up. But as I did mention, it doesn't work on mine since the flow is not set for that. Plus the pipe in the middle is quite big. But either way, I'm not using it for that. It's just an overflow for me, which goes into there. Well, that about sums up this video. It was fairly simple, just showing you how to make your own external bell siphon shaft external overflow. I did this one on my DWC Grover there that you can see behind me, which works well and I'm happy with that. If you do want me to make uh, another video on how to make one with a smaller setup, I can do that as well because mine is a little different. I use the rubber coupler instead of how it's typically done. But if you do have any questions, remember to leave those below and I'll get those when I can. Thank you for watching.